For over 30 years, Teleku has built its reputation in the community on a foundation of service, empowerment, advancement, and the creation of self-sufficiency, achieving multifaceted growth through innovation and collaboration. And we really believe that the greatest social good that you do for an individual is the creation of a full-time job so that uh, he or she may clothe, feed, and educate their own families. Teleku, a pioneering institution for the ages. What did the farm worker's wife say on their honeymoon? Not now, honey. I've got a migrant headache. These Teletubbies, Teletubbies are, are really, really not, not into, into Chicano, Chicano humor. humor. Ooh, Ooh, I'm, I'm sweating, sweating more than, than Mike, Mike Tyson, Tyson during, during a spelling bee. Maybe, maybe they'll, they'll go, go for, for some, some Chris, Chris Rock. Hey, yo mama so fat, yo home movies are in IMAX! No. Uh, I'd better try, try some, some danger, danger field. field. Oh, I'm telling you, my wife, she's so old, I didn't date her, I had to carbon date her. Time, Time to change, change to more Teletubby specific, specific jokes. jokes. Um, what did the Baka Baka say to the Poo Poo Poo? Poli Woli. Yeah. Yay! Uh, yeah, that's a real antenna slapper. Uh, how about this one? A rabbi, a priest, and a Teletubby walk into a bar. And no. No. A, a candy bar. Yeah. 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 And the candy bartender says. Big hug! Big hug! Yeah, hey, it's all in the timing. Stick around, folks. We're going to be looking at the pros and cons of ethnic specific humor on the next Cafe California. Um, why did the purple Teletubby cross the road? To go to the purple Teletubby Pride Festival! Yay! Good morning and welcome to Cafe California where we don't brew the comedy until you order it. I'll have an ego double grande because I'm Chris Franco, he's so muy franco with my cardboard cup. Gene, were you sneaking into my show? Oh, he's we got taking real over. Cups. It's going to be wild because I got four comedians brewing up a big pot of belle lafe for you and don't spill it on your lap. It might be feeling good. Okay, we're going to be discussing la cultura and comedy and here to discuss how Latinos put the ha in Hollywood is his lively <laughs> panel of pundits and punsters, the first of whom is Gene Pompa. Yay, Gene Pompa is a very funny man. Yay, who has appeared in every television show made whose title contains the word comedy. Plus, he's been on Conan O'Brien and Arsenio Hall, which means that you've got your own massage table, right? So if your beeper goes off during the, <laughs> during the show, you'll know why. Gene says America is clearly ready for Hispanic humor. That's a very funny thing to say, Gene. Welcome, Gene. <laughs> Welcome and thank you, sir. <laughs> He's been with us before, and I'm sure we'll have you again. Uh, but next, we've got Debbie Gutierrez. Can we get a shot of Debbie? She's playing stand-up clubs, and she says it's much easier than her first job in comedy. Yay, let's hear it. Her first job in comedy was a high school teacher. That's right, a rising comedian. She's frequently seen on TV. That's like the 7-Eleven closed circuit TV. Is, is it? it? Yes. Yeah saying, do you have Prince Albert in the can? <laughs> yeah, she does prank calls in person, folks. She's edgy, she's new, and she feels that performing Latino-specific humor keeps her out of clubs, except for the Latino nights. Welcome, Debbie Gutierrez. That's hey, it for Debbie. Hey, <laughs> Next, we've got Albert. <laughs> the animosity already. Alberto Ibarra is here. <laughs> He's performed in shows that are called uh, There Goes the Neighborhood and The Wizard of Aslan. There's no place like Tenochtitlan. There's no place like Tenochtitlan. <laughs> you know, Alberto is into big time Hispanic haha, -ha, and he has performed <laughs> with the San Francisco Mime Troupe, and he currently can be seen at the improv with his group called Chusma. There is no translation for Chusma, and there's no excuse for it, I'm sure. <laughs> Alberto is 100% Chicano, and he likes his comedy that way. Let's welcome Alberto Ibarra in the house, homeboy E. Okay. 
Gilbert Esquivel. <laughs> Esquivel. That him. Esquivel. That He's him. a good what friend of mine who performs all over. He was performing here before and he will not stop. He's done Vegas and clubs and colleges as well as being on the radio with Rick Dees. His <gasps> name is. I love Rick Dees. But you want to know something? His name is actually Rick Diaz. So come out of the Latino closet, Rick Dees. Come out. Gilbert is a great stand up and a warm up comedian who's done everything in the comedy world except bathe Milton Berle. <laughs> Have your agent get on, and it's, it's quite a thrill. He thinks that America is not ready for primetime Hispanics, hmm, but he also thinks that America isn't ready for the A-Track, so I hope we're all ready for <laughs> Gilbert Esquivel. And here's our topic, mis amigos. Cry, and you cry alone, yeah. but laugh, and the world laughs with you. Or does it? As Latino consciousness infiltrates the American mainstream, some comedic artists are choosing to downplay their ethnicity fearing it might have a negative impact on their career and communication with the audience, while many others proudly integrate their Latino-ness into their act as they introduce new ideas, experiences, and vocabulary into the halls of American humor. Who's right? Who's wrong? And what's a pupusa?